Aloha. So I kind of wanted to do something that I think I've been remiss in not touching on for quite a while in the cockpit. I, I haven't really talked about my controls that much or how the setup can be flexible. And that was kind of the whole purpose of the setup was flexibility. So I want to start with probably the one piece of hardware in this cockpit that makes my flexibility um, a possibility. And that would be the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Uh, I, I can't say enough good things about the Honeycomb Bravo. Uh, there's dozens upon dozens of reviews of this thing. Uh, and I will kind of maneuver it so we can talk about its awesomeness. The, the Bravo comes with two sets of uh, controls that you can pop on and off. Uh, this is a mixture. Um, you got your throttle, you got your, your prop pitch here. Uh, and you can swap these out to be just about anything. I can turn this into a dual engine uh, piston aircraft, and I'll do that as I go right here. And it is this quick to do. If I do it right, all of a sudden... We are now, let me flip that around, we are now a dual engine piston aircraft. Super simple, super easy. Now you have all the controllability. So control wise, it's amazing. And the friction adjustment and, or the friction, friction lock down here makes it so that these actually have a little bit of resistance as you go. Now there's no detents or anything, but there are aftermarket kits for the detents if you really want them. Uh, now this, uh, Throttle Quadrant also gives you, and I will pan over, you can see the messiness that surrounds it, uh, the landing gear, your trim, and it does indeed it is moving ever so slowly as I spin. I'm going to say this is over here. Ever so slowly it's moving. Uh, you also get your flaps which and you also have down here um, autopilot controls now you could use these controls in conjunction with an autopilot on air manager i like the physical control that the uh, prop wash panel offered excuse me that uh, that this panel offered me I'm a big fan of that. But that is a lot of controllability, including the enunciator panel. Now, the enunciator panel is such an added bonus because you will get alerts and warnings from the aircraft. Any aircraft you're in, they will show up. Uh, it'll even tell you about your parking brake. And for me, that's a nice thing because I do have a tactile switch. And, I'll pull in. and if you look here, Parking brake set, parking brake is off. I don't have to look in the aircraft. I can know as I'm going that my tactile switch did what I wanted it to do. So pretty much a fan of that. And these buttons, I have this one set up as the pedo, but these are very programmable. You can set these up in a matter of minutes in Microsoft Flight Simulator itself. And I know there's videos about how to do that, but in my cockpit, it's just offered me a ridiculous amount of, of not only flexibility but the ability to tailor this this setup and to kind of emphasize that point here you see I have my my dual controls well if I go into air manager and I will zoom you up to air manager because I have it up and running up there if I go into air manager let's say I want to go into a dual engine aircraft And let's go to the Skymaster. Skymaster is a dual engine aircraft. All of a sudden, I now have, we can go over here, I now have the displays of a Cessna Skymaster and dual engine controls. And the nice part about this, let me zoom out a little, is 
when I decide I want to use something, I can use my knobster to interact. And, the, and that's one of the big reasons why I shifted to this type of display versus those little circles you saw, the little holes I had, was the bezel that I put on here myself with that actually had holes for just the gauges would only work on the 172. Everything only lined up on a Cessna 172. This, I can swap any one of these. I can... I can turn this aircraft into anything I want it to be and have it be close to the right thing. Uh, and we'll, we'll jump to... We'll see what uh, no. So let's go to uh, and this is a the analog beachcraft. So now I'm in an analog beachcraft baron. Just by configuring air manager the way I wanted it. I'm swapping planes and I've got realistic gauges. And the nice thing about the uh, the Analog Baron, uh, I'm still learning that aircraft, but the Analog Baron can be configured with a GNS 530. So my center area here is pretty accurate for that aircraft as well. Even though I made this for a whole different aircraft, controls wise, it still fits the aircraft. And see what else can we do here and I'll click on panel and I don't think these Cessnas really uh, have much in the way yeah, I got overhead panels there uh, uh, the Cirrus I could do the Cirrus but that's Uh, if I want to do the uh, the ATR seventy two, and I want to bring it up on is it four or five? So now I got to remember which one I got to bring it up on here. So let's close it here. And which one did I want you on? Do I want you on four or five? So this guy is here. This guy. Five. Okay, so my left display is number five. So let's say I wanted that guy. I can double click on him and I'll put him on display five and add. And we downloaded. And then we come down here, make sure I enable the knobster. And let me turn it on. And without further ado, my cockpit has yet again shifted. And there are other panels that you could go out and get to put on these uh, on these displays, which is really nice. It's very configurable. Huge fan. But you just saw the uh, <clears throat> a my dual uh, piston engine. Well. It doesn't just have to be dual piston. The other beautiful part of this is, thanks to the commercial kit that comes with it, it can also be, and I'm going to set this up right now, and it is as quick as I'm showing it here. I don't want to show you here. So, and you just put these dust covers on. And now, once I have these dust covers on, I end up with... A dual engined aircraft. So, speed brakes, flaps here, and they do sell a detent kit that's aftermarket. Um, so, you'll actually feel the detents as you adjust your flaps, um, but you have 
And you also have thrust reversers here as well. And it does have a little go-around switch right over here. It's kind of hard to see. It's a little red switch right there. Let's see if I can... Yeah, there you go. And it works because there are pins that it, it makes contact with underneath, which is kind of nice. Um, I just can't say enough good things about how flexible this has allowed my whole cockpit setup to be. So if you're in the market for uh, adding a throttle and you're, you're wondering which one's the most bang for your buck, this is the guy. And I say most bang for your buck because the main competition you're going to have for this, for Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, I think Turtle Beach sells one. Um, I, I don't think there's a lot of realism in that one personally. Uh, you've got the Thrustmaster, Airbus, Captain setup, and then you get the, the Logitech, uh, very basic setup. But none of those, well... Only the, I think it's a Turtle Beach, does give you some displays. Uh, but the Logitech one and the um, Thrustmaster don't give you an enunciator panel. Um, you don't get all the extra switches that you have up here that are, that are controllable, programmable. And you don't get the ability to configure everything out of the box. Uh, with the Airbus one, you cannot configure that with controls. I mean, or, or just swap things out. And with the Logitech one, you have to go buy those aftermarket yourself or 3D print them yourself. So you're not getting this level of flexibility. You're also not getting this trim wheel. This trim wheel, again, this is pretty awesome. So <clears throat> I just wanted to talk about how flexible that has made my cockpit, though, because I got to tell you, I am able to swap between aircraft within minutes and even if i have to go in and build my own panels in air manager that takes 15 20 minutes to make it match the aircraft and then i'm done and when i say that i will show you that i actually built certain panels in here myself i didn't uh i didn't download them so let me get rid of this here real quick the sky masters I actually built these panels myself. So the Cessna Sky Panel, uh, Sky Master, two panels. I just used gauges that were available in Air Manager and kind of mixed and matched and made it match the cockpit. And I was able to make a decent representation going back to. The dual controls, um, which would be this guy here, this guy here, and our two pitch on the propeller. And our mixtures. So I am now in that Sky Master kind of mode. And the Carinado Sky Master does have a 530 in it as well. So again, I kind of match the Sky Master pretty well. So if you have any questions on on the, the cockpit as far as how flexible it is, you know, let me know. Um, if you have questions on Air Manager, there's a lot of great people to ask, but I've, I've learned quite a bit about it. Uh, and I can tell you one thing with certainty, that there is one bit of, of hardware slant software you're going to want. And I'm going to zoom in on it. That knobster. The Knobster is just so flexible with Air Manager software and with, with different cockpits and different setups. And this is the DIY Knobster. So I didn't pay anything outrageous for this. 
this is a dual rotary encoder. It can be a, a do-it-yourself that you that you uh, get two um, normal knobs for and 3D print the interface because there's actually a way to do that. Or you can spend the $13 and get one from uh, Prop Wash Sim. And all you do is use the Air Manager software with that dual rotary encoder and with an Arduino Nano card. The Arduino Nano cards are very small. They are about $9. And the Air Manager types literally have like a, a pamphlet that you look at that tells you how to wire it up. And then you download the software from them. You put it on the Arduino and it magically works. It, it is that simple. Uh, and if you can kind of see here, I can, anything I touch, I can change. This also works in glass cockpit as well. So in a glass cockpit, and let me bring up a glass cockpit really quick to show you. I know I've got one fairly readily available. So let's... There we go. Okay, so we'll go Beechcraft left, and we'll bring up the glass cockpit. You go here, and all of a sudden, I'm actually controlling stuff. Now, I don't have a glass cockpit um, aircraft up and running right now, but you can control everything you're doing here, and these buttons all work. So touching them actually depresses the button, but you see here in my fuel select... You can actually select. So this one, I'll call it a bit of kit, but uh, $13.95 for the Knobster, or I think it's $12.95 for the Knobster, $10 for the Arduino and some wiring. So $25 total gets you all this touchscreen functionality. I, again, I can't recommend it enough. Even if you only go with one touchscreen, uh, if you're somebody who wants a, a cockpit that can do multiple things, these touchscreens go for about 100 bucks. This is the 15 by 6 cheapo off Amazon. And $100 here. And the knobs are, again, 25 bucks. So 125 bucks gives you all that control. Couple that with a good yoke. And I, I love, love the uh, Honeycomb Alpha and the Bravo. Even if you didn't get all the rest of this craziness that I have, the amount of control you could have in your aircraft is ridiculous. And they, they actually have mounts that go straight to the top of the, uh, the Honeycombs, the Alpha and the Bravo. So this display would mount straight to it. You get a lot of flexibility. I know I'm kind of ranting on, but I did want that level of flexibility in the cockpit. And I wanted to show how easily I can jump from aircraft to aircraft. So thanks for watching. I know I was long-winded, and I, I appreciate you bearing with me if you did. Um, if you have any questions on the flexibility, let me know. But everything here is as generic as I could make it to allow me to jump from airplane to airplane to airplane. And so far, it's worked great for me. Um, the only thing I still have left to do is that little crinkle up there i got to get rid of. Uh, it does annoy me, but I'm almost there. It'll be gone soon. But thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me. And uh, as always, happy flying. Stay safe out there.